What's going on everyone? We're going to be playing War in the East 2. This game has been on my mind all day. All day. And yeah, I just I, I need to I need to play it, man, cuz <laughs> Yeah. So the I put, made the title of this video is War in the East 2, a masterpiece. Well, we'll find out. There's a bunch of things I, I want to check, like the Air Force system, the supply system. I want to dive deeper into these things without just sh you know shooting from the hip. But I will say it is the most in-depth game I've played. And, I mean, that's... I, uh, that's not surprising, you know, uh, Gary Grisby is, well, you know, the name trans is equivalent to, uh, that's where we get Grognard from, you know, so, yeah. Uh, so it's no surprise there that this game is the definitive version, the definitive game for a war in the east for uh, operation barbarossa for the eastern front uh because it has everything like everything if you want to get down to the nitty and gritty this is where you want to be i mean you can control everything look at this look at this so i i'm huge huge into stats when i see stats i think depth right so when i see like units there is 346,000 units. There are 48,000 depots. I mean, this is a lot. And then when you go into, like, for example, a unit here. Oh, I'm on the, uh, am I on the air? Uh, I think I am on the air side. First, I have to do the uh, Luftwaffe things, yeah. Uh, I still have to get used to the air system. I haven't read the manual yet. And, yeah, there's a lot in here. So the one cool thing about it is when I last played, I was actually able to do stuff. Not having played this game, like, well, obviously it's new, ever. And I was able to actually dive in, which I was kind of surprised at, because considering... You know, this game has everything. I mean, there's so much depth. There's so much stuff in this game. For me to, excuse me, for me to just jump in and be like, I can move units. I can attack. Um, dang on, ah, oh, my pasta's really killing me. Uh, for me to just jump in and actually be able to move units, attack without actually reading how to do that, uh, says something about this game. Now, if you guys follow my channel, you know that I'm anti-tutorial, I'm anti-manual. I believe if a game is properly designed, you don't ever, ha you never should have to read the tutorial or read the manual, you know? However, this game is different. Uh, this is full on Grognar. This is like, so if you put like, a, I, I would say like a line, chart line graph whatever right and you have one side where it's you know a casual game where you have i don't know almost like a axis and analyze kind of thing a game like that yeah definitely you sh there you should not read the manual you should the game should just work you should just be able to fall into it but when you get to the opposite side of the spectrum where you're playing every you know all the like dozens to hundreds of divisions controlling in you know all these fighters all these bombers the supply the rail pretty much everything you have your hand in everything yes that's when you need to whip out the big guns <laughs> you know <laughs> that's when you need to actually start reading the manual because yeah there's a lot <laughs> and for what you get out of this game is replayability so f for me to actually play this game right here, right, and finish it, I mean, look at all these hexes. It's just ridiculous. Right? There's a lot of hexes here. 
And a typical game like this can go on for years. Just one game can go on for years. So can you imagine? Uh, I know it's seventy nine ninety nine retail price, and I think it's uh, on discount for the launch, so it's like seventy one dollars. But considering that you pay eighty dollars and you get a game that's going to last ten twenty years, and that you can throw in thousands of hours, yeah. To me, that is very worth it. Oh wow, BF one hundred nine air. I don't think I went in this before. Wow, fuel stores. That's awesome. Oil stores, supply, ammo and units. Wow. That see like things like that, man. Ammo and units. Supplies and units. Baltic troop cargo ships. Wow. 333,000 soldiers I have in my pool of manpower. Where is the Jeez. My allies really don't have much. Finland has 761 men. Slovakia, 121. So, yeah, not a lot. <laughs> Love to see the uh, Soviet specs there. Jeez, look at all this stuff here, guys. Jeez. This game took, I believe, 10 years to make. Okay, so I could deactivate the unit. Now... How do I control the units? Is that Wikipedia? <laughs> oh, that's right. We went over this last. This bloody wi the, the game came with a bloody Wikipedia. It's incredible. I was kind of surprised. Like all those units that you saw on that screen, like they literally went in and put a summary for. Like, I mean, look at this. How many units is this? This is hundreds, right? Look at this. It's just keep going. I mean, they pulled out. My gosh, look at this. They pulled stuff from books. Look at this. Wow. That's dedication right there. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to actually fit something here. Build an airbase here. Create a depot here. Let's click. Am I able to move in individual units here? Oh, okay, so I can actually move the uh, army forces here. Okay, cool. So where was I, where did I last leave off? I know I was on my way to Minsk with this unit right here. So I'm on the outskirts of Minsk, which I believe is this guy, right? There are fourth armies over there. Right, that's Minsk. Unless I'm miss oh Minsk is over here. Okay, so I, I'm on the outskirts of Minsk. Uh I thought it was a little down here. So Minsk is over here. Um and I got some armor heading their way. And they got some armor defending Minsk. And then let me take a look at this unit here. Okay. 
All right, so, so this unit has 15,000 men, 141 artillery pieces, 168 tanks. Fuel is at 78%, which is, uh, what is this? Ooh, baby. 54 will be... What does 54 represent? I would think if I would hover over it, it would tell me. But it's not. Cool. Alright, I'm just going to have him keep going. Uh, now, let me zoom in a little bit here. So now you got that orange thing right here. I'm trying to figure out what that does. Now we go over Minsk over land and hit them here. I definitely want to keep the roads, though, because that's how I'm going to get my, you know, fuel. All right, and I remember, hold down shift, I think. Yeah, it said right here, hold down shift for deliberate attack. So, right click. Rifle division routed, beautiful. Can you move up? Nope. And then what do you got here? This 14,000, this is more of a support, right? 20th MD. So a few other things, I think I mentioned this. I really like how it tells me which unit is the hierarchy, like with these lines here, I like that. Makes it easier to like understand who's who, who belongs with who and such. So I forgot what I was doing with these guys. I remember I was supposed to cut off, ooh, I was supposed to cut off uh, Soviets that were coming up from the south here. And then, I'm trying to see the rail. I wonder if there's a way I can um, kind of have the rail be a little bit more rail mode. I guess that actually, I don't know what that does. Move mode. Ah, I see what that does. Okay, cool. That's easy to understand. So move mode is they move on their own speed. Rail mode is, well, rail, so get guys to the front. Yeah, transport, okay. So this makes it easier to understand what these guys do. Show production, show reinforcements, commander's report, logistics, build up breakdown. So this is where the air stuff is. Okay, good to go. Okay, good. Ground sport on. Nice. So the AI is going to help me out with that, which is good. All right. Map info. Oh. Nice. Okay, so that's rail damage. Okay. Okay. Ah, 
I see. Hmm. Ooh. So this will show the supply priority. That's good. Logistics info. Factory location. Oh boy. That's good. Ah, okay. I needed that turned on. I must have turned it off last time. Okay. All right. All right, so we now know where the roads are. So the, these are the roads. Uh, rail is these things. Definitely we want to get this. This is a major... Let's surround these guys. I think I moved them last turn. Yeah, I think I did a lot of moves last turn. Now, with the southern units here, I, don't, I think I'm just going to leave as is. Actually, maybe I should actually put some pressure on them. There's a rail here. So, one thing about this game is you don't want to do what... <laughs> I typically do which is rush into things you don't want to do that right and I, I have the habit of doing that because I don't know I guess I'm from Brooklyn everything rushes you know you know everything's fast in New York City I remember like you know when you go up to um, I don't know just thought just popped in my head and, you know since I was like a kid every time you uh, got to where the you know we have to go on the ground to like go into the subway right if you hear anything, like a little whistle or anything like that, right? Your autom mind automatically thinks the train's coming. So you're running down the stairs. You know, you're swiping that Metro card as quickly as possible, running down the stairs, because last thing you want is to miss the train. So, I rushed through life. <laughs> rushed through a lot of my stuff. Uh, been trying to be nice and... Uh, I know in the south, everything goes a little bit slower. I know down here they do that. I gotta like calm, take it easy. So what is this? Uh, I got 5,000 men and they got three units, all artillery battalions. Let's just mope them. Surrendered. Over for you, my friend. Should cut this some off here, too. I want to cut off as many access points that they have to take uh, rail and, and stuff north. So I'm gonna move this, what core is this? This is the second, this is the 29th core. And I got some, I got a Panzer, oh, interesting. Nice, okay. So that's going to select both of them. Good. Uh, let's go here. Ah, okay. So that's kind of like movement points. That's what that is. And then, yeah, okay. Jeez, these guys have a lot more to actually blow. 102. 
like I said, I'm learning. Learning all the time with this stuff here. Oh, you guys have a lot. You guys can still attack. Hit him. Hit him, Donnie. Good. Uh, for those who don't know, when I say stuff like that, uh, uh, I'm referencing the movie Donnie Brasco. Would you believe there are people in today's world that have never seen that film? Never. Like, when, I, when I talk to my coworkers, I'm like, you never saw Donnie Brasco? They're like, no. I'm like, how's that possible? How is that bloody possible? You've never seen Donnie. It's like one of the... Uh... Nice. They're falling apart, man. There's an airport here. All right, so I'm kind of understanding more and more about this game here and how the hexes light up and how all that relates. So, more and more, you know. And again, like I said, I'm not reading the manual. You know, it says a lot about this game, man. First Panzer Group. Now, sometimes when you're playing this game, you know, and you see all these units, it can get intimidating. And so, one thing you don't want to do in this game. It's like I was saying, you know, you don't want to run and gun it, you know. You want to do definitive uh, actions, right? You want to be methodical in this game. Um, moving units, looking at key objectives. Um, I'm just right now playing it just to kind of get a feel for it, right? Um, I'm not doing anything. You guys are all done, right? Yeah, I'm not doing anything that's... Oh, you can still go. Uh, yeah, so I'm not doing anything that this is going to be a permanent campaign. I'm just play playing around with this. They even got pictures of the commanders in here. You gotta be kidding me. I do like the music though, too. So, what was my. Uh, I'm trying to remember what I. I know they're moving guys this way. That's the rail head. So I got this now, good. So my suspicion was that they were gonna take a lot of these units, move them north to seal these breaks. That's why they're all on this rail. That's what I'm suspecting. So since I took that, it cuts off that rail. Um, they could probably get off somewhere here and then go by land, but. And then I got a breakout coming here and then these guys, I think there's a road here. And we'll smash into them over here. I might just go around them. I know that's what I'm supposed to do. So you look at all these units back here. And they're like fully fleshed out too. I mean, they got a lot of moves left.
Wow, there's a lot of units here. Wow. This is my northern. Okay. Now, I'm kind of curious. Can I select, by just doing the headquarters, can I select, like, all of them? And, like, do a, a mass movement? No, that's just going to move that guy. All right. Let me see if there's a way. I wonder if there's a way. Com report, supply. One thing that would be cool is like as one unit's moving, I wish I can select another unit and like start issuing orders. And you can see the differences in the roads, like, look at all the rail here, but then, like, Russia is just not uh, as dense. <laughs> now, one thing I would like in this game is a way to see, like, roads and rail better, you know? Because my eyes are getting worse <laughs> as the years roll by. I do notice that. Um, <laughs> so sometimes I'm like, my face is getting closer to kind of see, you know, where is this line going, you know? So it'd be nice if it was a little bit bigger or maybe a little bit bolder. Got my black coffee here. Um, and it's 12.15. I gotta get up really early too. But like I said, you know, it was on my mind. I was watching, um... Batman vs. Superman, the uh, Ultimate Edition. I was like, man, I was just going to sit here, watch this movie, finish it, go to sleep. But I was like, this this game is on my mind. This game is on my mind. All right, I'm just going to click end turn here. I know I'm not supposed to. See, that is cool. Props to the dev for that. If you don't want to deal with it, you don't have to. The AI can manage the depots for you. Auto assign units to nearest. Oh. That's cool. Nice. Oh, I like that. Thank you, devs, for that. And I think the AI is doing, I think I might have clicked it in the last turn. Not this one, but the last game I played. That the air operations, the AI is handling it. Because you could see that. I think it's dropping off supplies to my units. Air transport freight. That is really cool. I like that, man. See, that's an, like this is what I'm talking about. Like, this is the ultimate supply system. Now, you, I can turn this off and actually issue those commands myself. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> it's a lot <laughs> to work on. You know, moving individual units, getting a whole strategy together, um, and then you know, for those of you that can, you know, do the supply logistics system with the depot system and the aerial system props big props to you i cannot that would be i mean literally it would probably take me a week to do a turn not to say that's you know there's anything wrong with that there's a lot there 
Uh, so, you know, I remember when I was playing Hearts of Iron years and years ago. Uh, Hearts of Iron 3 when it first became like a bigger game from the second edition. I would spend like an hour or two doing stuff like that. And if I was playing my buddy Bob or my buddy Yanni in a game like this, I would probably take like a couple of days issuing orders and issuing like management, doing stuff like that. Because I would be intent on winning. Now I wonder what these red are. You see that thing? I'm thinking that's rail, like the rail line is broken or damaged here. You know what I'm saying? Because this is green, that's yellow. That's only, uh, I'm, I'm thinking that's how that works. But like I said, there's, um, I think, um, I think I have the manual as a PDF. I might have to print it out. Or I'm, I've been thinking about it. I might be able to buy the book. So I might do that. Just like bring it to work and just, you know, kind of run or read through it. You know, the problem with games like this is you got war in the West, right? War in the East, war in the Pacific, right? And it's hard to choose. <laughs> I'll be honest. It really is. I really liked the Eastern Front. There is, I mean... That was some vicious, vicious fighting, and you know, Stalingrad, and um, all, I can't even ma like number how many what if kind of scenarios were there. What if the Germans went straight to Moscow in '41 and they didn't stop to surround the uh, Russians? I think at Kiev, right? You know, tons and tons of what ifs. I think my problem is though, like I'll get into a game like this. Uh, play it for like a month straight right and then for some reason I don't know why I'll get into like a Pacific war kind of mood right I'll start putting on like uh, documentaries on you know the Battle of Midway in the Coral Sea and then I'm gonna I'll start firing up a, a Pacific strategy game you gotta be dedicated when you're doing a game like this But I do like when games like this... Ooh. Okay. I do like games like this uh, primarily because when you play games that are more casual, uh, access and allies, um, I'm not saying those games are bad, not at all. But when you win too fast, like let's say after, I don't know, two hours of gameplay, you're at Moscow, right? Or Berlin. It kind of takes the... Um, the what's the word uh, I'm gonna screw up this word but it, it takes away that reward right like putting in all that effort you know it's kind of like um, when you go to boot camp right like uh, Marine Corps boot camp right you go through three months of just really really craziness right and uh, if you ever see those documentaries of Marines getting their EGA the Eagle Globe and Anchor and they're crying right it's because it was a lot of war. like you know it's it's they get teary eyed because it's 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 a lot and they earned it and they were put through craziness you know so and that's what you get like if you win this game right like if you finish this game and let's say you're the Germans and you destroy, take Moscow Stalingrad and it took you two three years to do it. I mean, something like that is, <laughs> you better go out and celebrate. <laughs> and then you could probably declare to your friends, like, dude, you know, if we were, you know, uh, officers in the military, 
You'd be my subordinate. <laughs> July 6, 1941. All right. I like that they give you a term summary. mission this doesn't turn on I wonder why must be doing something wow look at all these units oh, man. like I said you can control every single squad morale fatigue aircraft ready eight aircraft aircraft and pool Ready pilots, jeez, man, aircraft kills too. Wow, man, sense of reserve this band. You could tell them to do daylight or just rest. Wow. First Royal? Interesting. Wonder if that's like a British unit that switched over to, you know what I'm saying? Wow. Uh, but like I said, this is something that I need to spend more time on, on how to properly issue air commands because like like you see here this is this is a lot right uh, I'm, I mean I understand that like this is the Lufafa um, area of operations command points okay Hundred eleven fighters, two hundred and seventy two. Kind of is that? I'm assuming tac tactical bombers, and I'm assuming CAS for the other ones. Yeah, I gotta spend some time on how that system works. I think that's very important. All right, oil, gas, everything is good. And I'm on the outskirts here, and since they're all falling, I mean, why not? There's some, I wonder how I can knock that out. All right, you're doing that, right? Can I get rid of the aerial stuff? No. Hmm. Ah, okay. Cool. So it's this one. Okay, cool. Now I understand. All right, so, yeah, this is much easier. It's still popping up here. Ah, 
Oh, I see what this does. Okay, my bad. So you just gotta learn where everything is. Now, one thing I will say though is like I'm I'm used to like John Tiller games, uh, which are Grognard level games. Uh, one thing I do appreciate is like there's not as many here. Like John Tiller games, they would be smaller icons and they would go across, uh, and then you would have a second row. Um, yes, <laughs> it requires uh, a little bit of learning curve, but. Again, John Tiller games are incredible. And actually, War Game Design Studio is actually now the head of that, so. How I. Ah, okay. So this is all going to be air stuff. So, execute air directives, yes. I see how this goes now. Sorties. So, do they're doing, I'm assuming, ground support. So, the air section and the logistics section. When I read the manual, that's where I gotta focus. Uh, the ground stuff, I got, a, I would say, a pretty good grasp on. Um, but there's a lot in this game. You know, I'm not expecting myself to be like, hey, I know everything within two hours, you know. All right, so they got some units up here, some infantry units here. Roads. And then the rail. Ah, nice. Okay. Tell me what you got. Give me gives you the altitude or flying cheese. So some of you guys are still doing recon. Some of ground support, some of you guys doing superiority missions. All right. Oh, I keep forgetting you can do that. All right, 163 tanks. Let's go to Minsk, guys. Let's go to Minsk. And then you guys can start moving north. What unit are you with? Oh, crap. You're way far forward, aren't you? Oh, yeah, he's way far forward from his HQ. Yeah, maybe not. Poor roads. Average roads. Okay. So anything with like a solid line is good roads. These are average. And then when it's peppered like this... I don't know. That's still good. I guess when it's... I don't know. I guess something like this. Poor roads. And there's no roads. Oh, that will be... oh there are roads in these. This is too crappy. Alright, so... Where are we now in this? Alright, so this is the northern sector. Where's Moscow? Minsk is over here. Moscow should be Kursk. Moscow's over there. All right. Oh, we got a long ways to go. Long ways to go. Oof. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What if we take this main road north? 
with this unit here. This is the eighth core. I want to slam right here. There's like no units. I might as well do that, right? I mean, they got this massive army here. But if I go up here, uh, that's not bad. That's a bad idea. If I go up here, though, I can cut supplies to these guys. Uh, and these are all infantry units. Right, these are not. Yeah, this is their first corps. What's here? Artillery battalions. Oh, cool. It's going to tell me. Nice. All surrendering. Jeez. You guys, no offense, but put up a fight at least. <laughs> Send one division north to deal with this. And then, so this is their main unit. Right, an army here. I think one of these is a Panzer, um, what is that? The specialized unit with the armor. I forgot the Dagon name. Motorized core, 20th Panzer. lot of infantry units all right so you are I got a 20 panzer let's go here wow this guy got some reach look at this I can still keep going Fourteen thousand men, hundred and sixty-one guns. Have at it, my friends. <laughs> Jeez, man. All right, very good, very good. Getting the lines all set, huh? Select multiple units. That is awesome. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's how you select multiple units. I like it. I like it. All right. So, I got these guys opening up here. I think what I'm going to do with you're motorized, right? Yeah. So I got tanks here. Let's let's do this. Beautiful. 
Ugh. Freaking infantry. Oh. That's cool. Yeah, the 10th Rifle Division. It says 1.8 out of 5.8. I'm assuming organization and such. Wow, they routed. Yeah, but these are all infantry units. They don't definitely don't have the reach. You guys are walking. That's the problem. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm just thinking about, so I'm not gonna, I don't, I don't wanna put down another game, but this game is very, like I said, there's a lot of depth in this game. There's a lot of stuff going on, but I'm able to actually move forward, right? I'm actually able to like kick some ass, right? I've destroyed a lot of Soviet units. Now, granted, yes, I know these Soviet units in the beginning of the war were, you know, Officer Corps was destroyed, all this stuff. I understand that, but I'm still moving forward. And, um, you know, I'm going to surround, uh, cut off supply to these guys and destroy them. Jeez, I definitely need to, because look at these tank divisions. I don't want to face them. I'm going to go around, cut them off. So this is a rail. This is a road. So... Them off here. I'm gonna see if I can get another unit, maybe a tank unit. Man, I can go around like this. You guys come from the north. Have you guys come from the. Actually, you're gonna head this way. Uh, I need another unit to put here. I'll probably put these guys, the um, second corps, to hit from the south. And then we'll squeeze them in with the uh, fourth Panzer group. So they'll come from the north. We'll go this way, and then hit. Or maybe just take this rail. I don't know. The thing about it is, like I said, you know, this is something that you got to be planning out. I'm rushing right through it because it's daggone 12:41. And you know, I want to get as much time in. But this is more just a learning experience, like I said earlier. When I actually play, I'm trying. I'm gonna see if I can get my, one of my buddies to play. The AI is doing. Uh, I'm, I mean, I haven't really uh, got to match wits with the AI because, again, Soviet position, 1941. But these are all infantry units. They're gonna move mad slow. That's the problem. So the best I can do is get them to. I love the fact that I can do this and get an idea of where the Soviet control zones are and then just deselect it and then just get like an idea of Wait, it just did it hold on I had, uh, had a different kind of oh wow But yeah, I can kind of get a lighter look at the, the map here.
yeah, I, I, I mean, I have this Panzer uh, group in. Maybe I can. I don't have to be so close that I'm right to cut off supply. If I go this way, this is going to be a big rail hub. I definitely need to take Riga. These guys could take Riga. You guys could keep heading north. Take Riga. And then I'll. I need to have somebody support them. Look at all these units. What army is this? These are all. This is what? One, two, three. Is that 40th? 42nd Corps? It's a lot of 42nd Corps. That's for dang on sure. If I use this. Oh, check that out. Nice. Okay, I like it. Cool. We're not gonna move. What do they got here? Three rifle divisions. I really like when that happens right here. I get a nice idea of everything here. Alright, what city is this? Kalinshikov? Is that what it is? And this is a big uh, hub here, I think. If I cut them off here, the next north-south rail is here. What if I go this way? Nah. I don't want to slam right into them here. Like, the whole point of armor in this is to go around, you know what I'm saying? To encircle them, but see they're all moving. Crap! Their fifth army's over here. So now they're moving units this way. I definitely need to take this this rail hub right here. And they got 119 aircraft there too, so that's gonna help me out. I need this rail hub, this rail hub, and this, and then I can really do some damage. Uh, and then this is a Panzer group in, so that's good. Uh, we're gonna hit them hard. I need that rail hub. Let's do it. That tank division, you see third tank division? 4.2 out of... Oh, nice! I kicked some ass right there. Yeah, we're not gonna do anything more. <laughs> Why are there infantry units in my panzer group? First panzer group. Oh man, this is the Panzer Group. That's the freaking corp. Ugh. That was a stupid thing. Yeah, all the armor's here. You know, open my eyes. That's what I need to do. Let me see if I can get rail over here. No, that's what I figured. Our rail begins somewhere around here. It ends here. Let's see how much of the points it's going to take. 89, which is not bad. And then can I put them on... Uh, I see. Okay, interesting.
Now, if you, some of you guys are watching and you're like, dude, don't do that. Like I said, I am just playing. Oh, I can't move that guy. Uh, I am, like I said, getting a feel for this. So when I actually do a real campaign. Now, one other thing that I do like is I can, you see how like if I hold shift and I move my mouse over, it still add, it adds units over there. And then I can, I guess, 57, you can, can I attack? I did before, that was a control. Oh crap, look at all the crap they have. Hold on, stand by. So, they have 156 T26, which is not bad. T38s. I know they had the big dogs, the T34s, and some units, but nothing here. T26s are garbage. I wonder why I can. Huh, that's weird. I can't attack all three. I was able to do it before. I wonder what I'm doing wrong here. Huh. Oh, maybe because I can't do a deliberate attack. Oh, that's probably why. Alright, well, let's just try it. You have 57. Let's do it with the EO. Defending force is held. Give me... So one thing that I, I wish they changed is the stat screen. Give me some more time on that. In fact, I'm going to go to the options and see if I can change that. Uh, I can't. Evacuates the craw. Oh. Yeah, it goes too fast. It goes too fast. I definitely need... I definitely need to... fuel she's gonna have by the time she gets there. Ooh! You see that? Dropped to 57. That's the, they had the, uh, what do you call it? The uh, <laughs> foot to the ground, huh? Look at the fuel on some of these units. My Panzers over here are at 38%. 57%. I really like this, man. Honestly, guys, this is freaking awesome. I really love that you have to take into account all these little things here. The ammo, the fuel, the supplies, movement points, all that stuff. Oh, I can move these guys. Those guys don't have nobody to fight. Uh, let's smash into here, make a break. So let's try this. Ba -da -ba 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 Huh. Huh. I thought I could move multiple units at once. That's weird. Oh, did I move these guys already? Is that what happened? You're at 200.
thought I could have moved multiple units at once like that. I guess not. No. If I left click, no. That's weird. I thought I could. I thought I did it last time. Yeah, must have been a mistake. Yeah. Shit, these are poor roads. There's a rail though. That's why they can't move quick. This is the main road. Cool, okay. But I definitely want to secure the rail. Hmm, interesting. All right, I think I'm gonna wrap it up here. So uh, just going to my, I guess, question that I asked for the beginning of this video or the, whatever the title of this video, uh, is War in the East 2 a masterpiece? Uh, since there's no other game that has this kind of depth and these kind of stats and this kind of information and just yeah I would have to say you know honestly from what I see here uh, my early impressions yeah I, unless something pops up you know that I don't see coming but yeah honestly guys this is like it's incredible it really is and it's like there's a piece of me saying like <sighs> that it's can't believe it you know like just really honestly can't believe it it's it's grognard level it's the top of the top right um and i'm able to kind of just jump right into it and move units and go into as much detail as i want or give the ai certain controls which is freaking awesome man I love being able to control every unit. You know, that that is really awesome. Uh, like, I can't think of any other game like this. With this kind of depth and this kind of passion and this... I mean, like, all these things here. I get 19, 12 flat guns. I mean, I don't know any game that does this. So this is, yeah, I would say an Eastern Front strategic masterpiece of a game. Unless you guys know another game that is as good as this, um, I can't think of any, honestly. You know, and I, I used to, I was talking to Historical Gamer, which is a YouTuber that I, I do a podcast with. And he was talking about how War in the East originally was inspired by War in Russia. Now, this was a game I played in the 90s, I think. And I think it was on DOS. I, if you guys don't remember, if you guys remember DOS, uh, and if, for those of you that don't remember DOS, DOS was an old operating system by Microsoft. Um, yeah, it was old. <laughs> uh, but War in Russia worked on that. And uh, I remember playing it and... Uh, I remember how complicated it was, uh, and just to see how far we came, like keeping that depth, in fact, not even, going even more, adding more and more depth, but also making it easier to just jump into. That takes, that takes something right there. That takes, you know, really great design work. You know, to be honest, when I started this, guys, I honestly thought when I was going to jump in um, that I was going to have trouble even, like, you know, that I was going to get lost, honestly. Like, I thought I was going to come in the game, I'm like, all right, uh, so how do I move a unit and then spend, like, because I didn't read the manual, I thought I was going to spend, like, 20 or 30 minutes, like, uh, do I have to click this, and then do I click that? Okay, I think I moved that unit, you know, kind of thing. 
but no, it's it was just much much more easy to just jump in and just get an idea on how like I'm, I'm what I'm two hour two three hours into the game and I got it. I'm not saying I understand everything, but I understand a really good chunk of it so much so that like you know I'm able to move you know Panzer groups and you know. I kick the crack, uh, crap out of some Soviet unions. And it's easier to read where the Soviet units are, where the road um, rail hubs are. Wow. Yeah, I'm probably going to stop it here, guys. Um, definitely going to read the book on the, I, I mean, I really don't need to, the AI can handle the air and the, the motor, uh, the, what do you call it? You know, do that stuff. So I like that. What is this? Auto assign units. This is the only thing I don't understand why it's not highlighted. I'll, I'll have to figure out that. Wow. Wow. Look at this. This is incredible. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Masterpiece of a game. Masterpiece of a game. Look at all this. Wow. Wow. It just keeps going. Wow. <laughs> Ploesti. <laughs> nice. And it takes me right there. Nice. Wow. Wow. Now, if I was a Soviet, you know, I'd probably see if I can get my air assets here. It's probably too far, but blow that up. Synthetic fuel resources. There's just so much in this game. I, I, I'm just uh, lost for words because it's just like looking at all this stuff. probably army theater so I won 69 battles 12 losses vehicles I'm getting half the supply that I need it's not good army group center army group north let's take a look uh, army group center morale is high that's good Construction battalions, 4th, 9th Army, 2nd Panzer Group. Oh man, I can transfer units. Oh wow, I can increase or decrease the support level. Wow, man.
Yeah. I, I mean, I'm just, like I said, I'm, I'm lost for words. There's just so much stuff that you can control. So much stuff that you can... I mean, you don't have to. You could just play the game as is, but... Wow. I mean, if you ever wanted to answer those questions, like, what if I moved, I don't know, the 80th, 89th um, Infantry uh, Division to, I don't know, the 40th Corps, right? And then bolstered those numbers and would, you know, Stalingrad uh, be a different situation at that point? You know, like, answer those, like, what-if situations uh, when you're reading the books and stuff like that. Man. Heinz Guderian. That only gives you some stats here. Nice. Oh, snap. I could change out the commanders. Yeah, I, I'm not changing him, though. <laughs> Heinz Guderian is a, a capable commander. Second Panzer Group. Wow, man. Restrictions ground only. Max command, high command. Wow, man, and you could set colors? Oh, snap, check that out! Dude! That is sick, okay. I like that, that they did that right there. Davis, thank you for that. That That's pretty cool, that they let you kind of... Uh... Let's do that. Nice. Okay, that is cool, man. That comes in handy for like units like this when you're like, wait, which unit is which? Especially with my eyes, you know. Supply priority. Oh, I can set a supply priority. Shit. Yeah, four. Obviously. Daggone, man. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna... Wow. Wow. Yeah, it, this is just unbelievable. Moscow. That's where we're headed. And I love the fact that I could just look at this. You know, like I could take a picture of this. Like this would be like perfect to take a picture of this, put it on my, uh, I got like these uh, whiteboards behind me and then use like a, a, I don't know, mark or whatever and just kind of like draw where I want these units to go. Mm. Dag gone, man. If you can find somebody, I mean, you can play the AI, but if you can find somebody to like do a long game with, like we're talking, you know, from beginning to end. I'm trying to see if I can get my buddy Bob to actually <laughs> do this. All right, I'm going to save it here, guys, because honestly, uh, it's zero one and coffee's starting to wear off. The only thing about this game that I'm going to have to say is nice, is that I wish this game came out in March of last year. You know, this whole virus thing started coming on and I could just sit back and just you know, just do weeks of this, but you know. This would be a great game to actually be uh, you know, kind of stuck at home, nothing to do <laughs> kind of thing. Although my wife would probably be banging on doors like, what are you doing in there? All right. All right, guys. I Hopefully you guys enjoy this. Honestly, uh, I am I am really, really motivated uh, about this game. Really motivated.
7199. Yeah, and the cool thing about the manual right here, it's oh, it's a hardbound full color manual. See, that's that says something about the um developer right there. Right there that they're so proud of this game. They're so passionate about it that they are making a full hardcover, hardbound, full color manual, a 520 page. Wow. Nice. Very, very nice. See right here, it says, that's what I was expecting. It says difficulty advanced, and I'm like, gone, man, I'm gonna need some time to kind of understand how anything works in this. No, man, not at all. You know, not at all, which is amazing. Amazing. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest, you know, Gary Grigsby, uh, two by three games and Matrix games really out there did themselves. Uh, I wasn't expecting this game to be this easy to just jump into and play. Now, obviously, like I said, it helps to read the manual and uh, understand the, um, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, uh, you know, the fine details of this game. But as you can see, I went into the uh, second Panzer group and changed their um, priority level. I mean, that was easy. I could, I could have changed Heinz Guderian to somebody else. I wouldn't do that, though. <laughs> All right, guys. Hopefully, you guys enjoy this. Uh, yeah, man. This is freaking awesome, man. This is a PBM game, which I definitely want to get my hands on. Oh, snap. They put an editor in here. They put an editor in here. Can you believe that? They had all that. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm just surprised by it because honestly, guys, uh, the amount of work that went into this game and they added an editor. Hmm. Wow. So by adding an editor, that means that uh, the replayability is going to be... Uh, I mean, you already got a lot of replayability, but you're going to get a lot more replayability because some people are going to go in and change things up and do a lot of cool things. So, all right, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I did. <laughs> uh, and I'll catch you guys in the next